Okay. Hello, Nate. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello and welcome to this uh, Media Mastermind keynote. I'm Kate Bulkley, and I'm here with Nate Hayden. Nate Hayden is the VP of AOL's Original Content and Studios, and he also runs AOL's Branded Entertainment Group. For those of you who are looking at your printed program, this is not Dermot McDorm McDormick. It's not, right? <laughs> I look okay. a lot. This like is not him, but Dermot not. with a makeover. No, mm -hmm. Dermot unfortunately left AOL a couple of weeks ago, and now Nate reports directly into Jimmy Maimon, who was on the stage. A couple who was days on ago. this stage a couple days ago, mm -hmm. and Jimmy, of course, is the head of all of AOL consumer brands and content. Correct. So. Correct. He is my boss. It's your boss, exactly right. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Nate because he's not in the printed program, because he's not Dermot. So let's start there. So in your role. You oversee original programming, branded video creation for AOL's brands that include the Huffington Post, Engadget, TechCrunch, and most recently, Go90, which Correct. of course is the Verizon uh, brand. It's the mobile app that Verizon has launched. Now, Verizon, as you may recall, is AOL's new parent company. So we'll talk a little bit about mm -hmm. Go90. Um, for those, uh, the, the other thing that you do is that um, you came to a, well, you do content and studios, so it's important it's content, studios, and branded. Those are Correct. really the three. Mm -hmm. You came to AOL in 2013, but you're an old TV hand, which yes. I always like to say. <laughs> Nearly two decades of experience in the television industry. Um, you were a producer, you're a director, uh, development executive, you nearly a decade at MTV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. You also worked most recently at um, VP of Development at Fremantle Media. That is correct. And at AOL, you've developed and supervised a broad slate of things, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to mention a couple of them. Um, uh, you've uh, worked on some things with James Franco, Sarah Jessica Parker, Jared Leto. Mm -hmm. You did the Park Bench with Steve Buscemi, mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany Schlain, The Future Stars Here, and most recently, True Trans, right? Yeah. With uh, Laura Jane Grace. Yes, yeah. which we which, Emmy and nominated. These were nominated, yeah. right, for Emmys? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and Nicole Richie's Candi Candidly Nicole, right? Yep. That became a cable series on TV at on VH1. VH1. Okay, yeah, so two seasons. So yeah. you've sort of understood the sort of the crossover, back and forth. All right. Yeah. Um, I sound really busy. That's fascinating. You sound very busy, <laughs> but that's good. I'll take it. So before we get into our chat, mm -hmm. um, would this be a good time for you to? Cue up the sizzle reel? Yes, absolutely. About. So I've got a reel that we can take a look at that's actually from um, earlier this year at our Digital New okay. Fronts. It'll give you an idea of kind of the content that we rolled out this year. So we can take a look. Okay, at. roll the clip. Wow. I mean, there's a lot there. Yeah. In a We've, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I no, it's just going to say you'll get a good scope there kind of on the, the stuff that we have done for years in our original content and also starting to see some of the formats we've shifted into a little bit more live, a little bit more daily content. So. The thing is, idea. because you have so many brands, you know, from HuffPo to TechCrunch and now Go90, I mean, you've got a lot of different, let's say, venues to put stuff and a lot of different audiences mm -hmm. and different sensibilities. So that's yeah. kind of fun for, for you as a programmer. Yeah, yeah, from the content standpoint, it's great because we have existing brands that already have these fantastic voices, like oh. Huffington Post is obviously um, a really, really well-known brand. And so to start aligning not only um, news-like content for them, but to also take that voice and branch it out into, into even... Even, even broader and bigger concepts, documentary style concepts, but then across all the other brands from TechCrunch to Engadget to Makers to Cambio, all kinds of different voices, so mm. exciting from the content perspective, but also a built-in endemic audience that we can tap into right out of the gate. Right, right. Which is great. So Verizon, let's go back to that for yep. a second. So Verizon's a big wireless company. Um, they bought AOL. Correct. They have just launched this Go90 thing, mm -hmm. which is their mobile app targeting millennials. How is this changing what you're going to do in the content? In content-wise? Well, it, a couple-fold. One, as I kind of pointed out, we'd already started to evolve content a little bit um, within my originals group, but I think that the one of the biggest short things... short form, you mean? Yeah, okay. short form and also genre-wise. We pushed okay. into music and sports for one of the first times in the three years that I've been at AOL. Um, and okay. the, with Go90, I think, and with Verizon in general, I think the first thing out of the gate isn't even necessarily a content piece that's interesting for me. We immediately multiply our distribution. We're on, right out of the gate, about 150 million handsets. That app will be available to Verizon customers with a slate of, slate of content that's exactly the same in some senses as what a non-Verizon customer will get. There will be exclusive content available on Go90 just to Verizon customers, mm -hmm. but that's just such an exponential increase of our distribution. 
Within that, within content, yes, absolutely, there is. We are going to um, be leaning a little bit more millennial for that, um, a little bit more. There's actually going to be a little bit more sports content on Go90. Um, but I think in general, it just really adds, and like I said, another voice to that slate of groups that I was already programming for. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't change it drastically, mm -hmm. to be totally honest. What, what's interesting about it is, um, you know, a lot of people think that sh mobile means shorter, it means less premium, it means not very good, basically. Right. So <laughs> you, would, you would counter that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. the, the And does it just mean short? Does it just no, mean 2 minutes? I don't know. And that's actually a very interesting point. I think that's one of the things that was fascinating for me when we when I get into that mobile content conversation, knowing what's going to be rolling out on Go90 across the the coming year. It, it is everything from short form, some daily, some live, but it also does, in new form, I believe, is actually the announcement's already out. They're doing six um, scripted series. Yep. So it is everything from really kind of immediate and accessible, um, almost vlogger-style content. I think that's why mobile content gets a bad rap. But I think that the reason that that engages with an audience is because it's so immediate and there's a very direct connection. But I think that knowing that my niece, obviously a great example, 14-year-old niece, she will consume 30, 40, 50 minutes worth of content um, in, within one episode. So we're not limiting ourselves either A, to format length, but definitely not to um, the level of qu the quality of content. So premium is absolutely still going to be a piece of our mobile strategy. By the way, why is it called Go90? It's a very good question. Is it? Anybody out Do you here know, know the answer? I, I'm stalling. <laughs> I'm seeing if anybody else knows. Um, so what Go90 refers to is, again, speaking my 14-year-old niece, they don't watch content this way. They go 90 degrees with oh, it. Oh, come on, really? To watch content this way. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about Just turning the phone. Exactly. Okay. 90 right. degrees. Just walking around the streets here. I should be in branding. Gosh, I didn't <laughs> even get that. All right. Um, all right, so let's talk about the content team. Now, sure. Verizon had a content team, right? Correct. I mean, they put the, they put the whole UI together. They, I think these people actually came from OnQ originally. So a piece what are you going to yeah. do about these guys? So what how I think big is, is that team? It's, well, what I think, we are in the process of kind of figuring out how those two families will merge together. But I think there's going to be a pretty great marriage there because their team has done an amazing job of acquiring content and creating deals and licensing content to fill out the entire Go90 slate. But we will marry that with kind of our original development and current group that resembles actually a lot like a traditional broadcaster has. Okay. So to marry those two groups, I think, is going to be relatively seamless. And I'm actually excited about what and we're going to And you're going to oversee all these people? Jimmy and myself. OK, all right. But it's still being worked out. Don't write my job description. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. Um, when, you, when, you, when you look at, well, let me ask you one question before that. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at, you know, you're here at MIPCOM. Yeah. I mean, are you starting to work more with, uh, let's say, more traditional television film producers? Or is it more most this sort of influencer type uh, group that you're more interested in? Well, it's interesting because there is a couple different pieces to this. One, as far as our production companies that we work with, I'm working with the same production companies that I would have worked with in my previous incarnation in television. So oh. all of the production companies that I tapped in the unscripted world there, I've reestablished with in, um, in the digital space. When it comes to talent, um, it is also, as you see, some very major name talent. But what we've also, over the couple years, come through it's a really realization, obvious to the rest of the, the digital world, is that celebrity value is very much equal now by influencer and social influ influencer value. And so there was a couple examples um, on our previous slates. Candidly, Nicole, we went to Nicole because of her 4 million Twitter followers. Yes, wow. she's a name, but also yeah. like that, that social cachet yeah. is massive. And then I think a but great example... But it's not example, just cachet. She also can activate her audience, right? It's, I mean, it's isn't a built-in about... marketing. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah, it's, it's kind of like you, you spend, you don't have to spend the marketing money um, just based on a piece of the kind of marketing muscle they bring themselves. Mm -hmm. um, another example from a previous slate, uh, a YouTube talent, I Justine, mm -hmm. uh, has a massive YouTube following. And so we partnered with her to do a tech-based show, started off as wearable tech, um, but she brought a massive built-in audience uh, to that series and to the point where it was one of our best performing series on two slates ago, renewed it for a second season. So she's a great example of kind of bringing that um, those eyeballs directly to content mm -hmm. built in. Okay, so so 
So what would be a good example of something that you're doing for, say, uh, I don't know, Huffington Post? I mean, I think you have a clip that yes, relates to absolutely. this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we did. We're doing a show that I'm actually super excited about that launches on the 15th. It's a show called Now What with Ryan Duffy. Okay. Um, Ryan and Duffy. Train who Ryan Duffy Yes, of course. Ryan Duffy worked um, as a correspondent for Vice for the, about the last 10 years, mm -hmm. um, was on the, the Vice HBO series, yep. a yep. on-camera and also a journalist um, who's got a really great voice and we sat down and started developing a content, developing a show that he kind of brought his, he would never say this himself, but his experience at Vice was in that they have a tendency to swoop in and look at an environment and say, this is an incredibly messed up situation. Right. Here's how bad it is. And then they pack up and they leave. And right. that's the end of the story. <laughs> okay. So he consistently, and I think as a viewer, you're left with the feeling of, all right, well, wait, now what? Like, explain mm. to me what happens next. Mm. So Ryan um, will, in each of these episodes, go into an area where there is a problem, where there is a situation that needs to be fixed, and really kind of tap into something that's working, but through the eyes of the person who is actually executing it, which is a, a tone and a theme that matched up beautifully with the Huffington Post, because they're very much a escaping the if it bleeds, it leads theory of how to program news. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was a kind of a natural partnership. Yeah. Um, super excited about that one. And you're correct, we do have a, a piece of tape on so, that. Should that we I'd watch that now? We'd love okay. that. Let's watch the clip, please. So that's coming out October 15th, is Correct. that what that says? Mm -hmm. Now, where would that come out? Where would that premiere? On HuffPost? So that will premiere on Huffington Post and mm -hmm. be pushed out throughout the rest of our network. And it's, again, speaking of kind of the benefits of having this great suite of content brands, um, we can promote across those networks as well. So TechCrunch will support it, Engadget will support it, AOL.com will support it. Um, but so, its home will be. So you almost got sort of a network of these sort of online brands that can actually push around content. It's almost like a channel environment where you can, you can signpost, you can promote, you can Correct. do lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, I mean that more brands are in the offing? I mean, is that the idea that that, uh, that you get more brand? I don't know if you know about that, but in other words, is the idea to build up more brands so you can have more channels? Or maybe from your pr perspective, is it about? making content that always works on more than one brand, if you see what it's, I mean. Yeah, no, honestly, I do, yeah, I, I do see what you mean. I think, well, one thing that I think is interesting about it is that it is uh, kind of this fusion of, like, we've always said if TV and the, the internet video had a baby, this was kind of where we were, we're yeah. headed <laughs> with it. Um, and I think that, yes, the do I necessarily program with the mindset that I can put them on multiple brands within? Not necessarily. Okay. I actually kind of look at it right. as I'm the parent network, and a la NBCU, one of our partners, okay. that has a number of channels under, under its umbrella. I can nurture and develop content within each of those brands yep. that is, that is uh, that fits within that brand versus thinking of it more of almost from a sales perspective where right. it's, I've got to have two buyers for yeah, it. Yeah. I think of it more of how can I customize for one of those brands. That's interesting. What kind of pitches do you want to hear from these folks out here? I mean, what are you looking for? What rocks your world right now? What's the hot thing that you want? So many things rock my world right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just love oh, that. Oh, do tell us. <laughs> no, what I, rocks your world? Right now, actually, I think one of the things that's been very interesting for me is unscripted will always be something, and I think in this environment I've, I've learned, it's called factual. Here. Factual. Yes, factual. <laughs> um, that will always be something that we go after. I think yeah. one of the things that's extremely exciting right now is for Go90, we talked a little bit about this previously. There is, I believe, a, a potential there for, uh, a, as, as House of Cards and Orange is the New Black stuck a flag in what was possible for content at Netflix yeah. um, in the, the VOD model, I, I look at this as what is the opportunity for us to take a new format, be it scripted drama, and stick a flag in what is possible within scripted mobile content. And I think that's a very interesting space to be playing in as I move forward and I kind of look at what we'll do with Go90, but in, even potentially across my other brands. But that's kind of the, the conversations that I want to start engaging in at this point to think long term. And again, not to, I never feel like that there is a reason to go toe to toe with Orange is the New Black or House, House of Cards, but what is the thing that can have that same energy because we all know everyone in, everyone in the, in the um, consumer world said, oh my God, I've n I never could have imagined that Netflix would have done something of that caliber. So I think that there's potential there. Um, so you're telling me that you might be doing a very high profile, you know, I'm big budget. That's the conversation. Scripted for mobile, something or other. It's, it really is what is the question being, how can we find that thing that is the wow new definition of drama scripted on a mobile platform? Hmm. 
submissions will be accepted <laughs> from now. To you, directly to, to you. To me, no, no. Yep, directly <laughs> to Kate. Uh -huh. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so talking about Unscripted, uh, mm -hmm. the Outspeak partnership we heard ah, about yes. on this stage th mm -hmm. earlier this week, that's Outspeak is this thing between AOL and broadband TV. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's sort of like a citizen journalism with a little bit more curation involved. Are you going to get involved in that as well? Because that seems to be a big project that Jimmy has in mind. Yeah, honestly, that is something that was born of the Huffington Post. And I will be involved in, in, in various ways. And I think that it really speaks to larger, on a larger scale for AOL in general, across all of AOL brands. A big piece of it is being open and open to um, really kind of tapping into the creators around mm -hmm. the world. That's okay. a great example yep. of it. And, and there's no better place than Huffington Post for kind of the way that the genesis of the new, new way of gathering news. And we've all seen that a lot of news breaks via Twitter, a lot of news breaks via Instagram, and we track hotspots via the tweets that are coming out of them. And that was something that early on I had even said, listen, Huffington Post is a great place to curate that and to evolve that. Um, and so that's a, a, a beginning of that. And I think you'll see even more with Huffington Post, and I believe you'll even see that more with TechCrunch and across the other brands, mm -hmm. of really tapping into an extremely active audience and people are used to being a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I think that will only grow even beyond Huffington Post mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about economics, because one of the issues that we always hear about is, you know, we have bi budgets in television that make sense, mm -hmm. or budgets in film that make sense, but when you get into digital, they often fall apart. Correct. And you have to really shave your budget, you have to make it a lot cheaper, because you just can't raise the amount of ad dollars that you would want to do, or you can't get the right co-production, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing that? Is that starting to change? I mean, it, can, can we start with saying, we've just seen this Ryan Duffy clip, so people mm -hmm. know the quality of that, they've just seen a little clip. Correct. Is that budgeted at the level that would, you know, a cable channel budget, or is it budgeted at a digital, you see what I mean? Is yeah, it, no, absolutely. Uh, this is kind of the, the fight that I've had to fight with, uh, or not even fight, but the conversation that I've had as production companies grow into understanding what they can do for digital. And it, uh, Ryan Duffy is an example of if that were, if that content were blown out into a longer form, it's mm -hmm. about going to be eight, nine minute episodes. We are still talking about a similar per minute cost as far as what we would be, we be doing in traditional. Really? Um, for it's like a cable getting channel. to there. It's okay. getting, it's yeah, getting absolutely. there. Absolutely. So and the I gap is closing. The gap is 100% closing. And I think in conversations with production companies, and I'm sure conversations I'll have with more people here, it's finding, it's shifting the model a little bit. Is it somehow um, using some of the content as a lost leader to work your way into digital? But a lot of the forward thinking production companies have figured out this is a way to dip toes into something that is unavoidably going to be the future. And there is absolutely starting to become a meeting in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So it's not just cheap stuff anymore is what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> That's my um, quote. <laughs> not just cheap stuff. So like the new form digital, you talked about yeah. that. That's that six part scripted. Six episodes, scripted, scripted, scripted series. Mm -hmm. So can you give us an idea of what that's costing or, you know, per? I don't actually. You don't I don't, A, I don't kiss and tell. I don't talk about budgets. Okay. But that is definitely like an, a the, good example of healthy budgets that okay. we're seeing um, as we move into more content for Go90. And I think that put it, being able to put more muscle behind things when you have deals like a Verizon, we can put a lot more resources behind production. Mm -hmm. So I do see across the board, across all of kind of the broadcast, the digital broadcasters, I see budgets starting to catch up. Okay. Um, there's a lot of talk in the industry about sort of owned and operated platforms versus, you know, other people's platforms, mm -hmm. be it Facebook or, you know, whatever it might be, YouTube. Right. Where do you come, I mean, does that matter for you? I mean, as a content creator, do you worry about where this stuff shows up and mm -hmm. is that part of the economics? How's that figuring into your strategy? Absolutely. As a content guy, I try to ignore it completely, <laughs> but knowing full well that I can't. No, so our content, we of course prefer that our content stay in our network. It's much easier for us to monetize, mm -hmm. but to be, um, as far as what's been going on currently, we consider P Facebook a partner in a lot of senses. We have worked with them on a sneak preview for James Franco's Making a Scene. Okay. Um, we also, Huffington Post, I believe is, the, I believe it's the number one social poster of video on, on Facebook as well. Oh, okay. um, so the, the, getting our content out and across, and we've had our content feature, we feature our content on YouTube, a, a large portion of it as well. But so. is this mostly promotional? I mean, you're not running full apps. There are full apps. There are full apps. Yeah, on okay. YouTube for the, traditionally we have run okay. full apps there. Um, okay. it, it's been on a case by case, and also for the sneak preview for making a scene, we, that was a sneak preview of episode one, and that was full episodes as well, so. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess, I guess it sort of depends also on the content and what, what you're looking at. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about branded uh, sure. content, because that's something you're also involved yes. in. Now, that's obviously a growing area. The advertisers are very keen. The brands love it. They want to mm -hmm. be you know, inside the, the story, yeah. et cetera. Um, how does, where does branded content sit in your organization? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of over here on the side? Is it becoming more in the middle? Is it where you say they make the money and we try to do the, you know, the sort of the, the wonderful vanity the projects? Artsy stuff. The artsy stuff, yeah. <laughs> how, talk about that. Absolutely, yeah. My group right now has, it's essentially two chambers under my, under my umbrella. So they are, um, it's creative executives and, and development folks that are working on both uh, original content and branded content. Mm -hmm. So we've got the same creative minds developing both types of content. Um, and so one can kind of feed the other in a perfect case scenario. One example that I like to use is a couple slates ago, I did a show with Ellen DeGeneres and with Kevin Nealon called Laugh Lessons. Okay. Basics of the show was yeah, each episode, a different comedian uh, would sit down with kids and work through a problem in a kid's life by teaching them a comedic technique. Mm. Can't, can't, uh, don't know how to ask the girl out for the dance, uh, do a prat fall and get her laughing and then ask her out. Essentially boils <laughs> down to kids say the darndest things, but great, great content. They had a great Rolodex to bring comedians in. Carnival Cruise Lines came on to sponsor that original series, oh. and we could then, as they loved doing that original series, but we didn't integrate at all into our original series, so we offered them a branded series that uh -huh. took one of the comedians, George Lopez, okay. and did a full branded series under the same umbrella called Laughs on Deck that was yeah. kind of a great example of those two things kind of cross-pollinating one from the other. And they put that on their site, or where do they put that? That ran on an place? AOL site, and okay. they, had, they had usage of that content as well. So, and so it's, it's, that that was a great example, I feel like, of what I try to do with my group. Yes, I've got development folks, but we really, at the core, and I don't know how many people are doing this right now um, and may know this pain and or struggle, sitting down with a brand and having the conversation say, listen, what are your touch points and what do you want to get across? And making sure that the creative is um, appealing to a consumer because consumers will, cons they will watch great content and they are more and more than ever okay to have some branding messages within that content mm -hmm. um, as long as the content is good first and sometimes there's a little bit of a push and pull with a brand to make sure that the brand message is not necessarily being beat over the head and coming before good content. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's kind of an evolution that that area is really starting to excel at. I'm seeing more and more and more incredibly good branded content. So, so you have the same kind of group looking at both. So it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, these are the these are the goes guys and these are the other guys. Exactly. What proportion of your content is branded now? Is it like, you know, 20%, 80%? 50%? I'd, I mean, honestly, I'm trying to think. Well, all I can say is I know that over the last year, our branded group has increased their throughput by about 30%. So a third, we've done wow. a third more content this year. Right. But I would say we're probably doing equal, I'd say 50-50 within my group of original to branded content. Right, interesting, okay. Yeah. Um, you, I don't know if you, I think you were here for the Facebook um, mm -hmm. uh, talk. And she talked about uh, 360 and Oculus yes. Rift, mm -hmm. Rift and, you know, there's all these new formats. Absolutely. Now, as a content maker, mm -hmm. how interested are you in this? I mean, is this, I mean, you know, she obviously is very excited, and obviously yeah. that's a, it's, it's almost a little bit like when Netflix put everything out in, you know, 8, 4K, you yep. know, it was sort of like, this was, this was one of their things they could hang there. It was House of Cards, but also, oh, yeah. look at this quality we've got. Yeah. So, but as a content producer, I mean, are we there yet? When do you start producing this kind of content? Would you produce this kind of content given mm -hmm. your outlets or not? It's honestly, it's extremely exciting stuff because being a techie myself, I'm absolutely fascinated by that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I think that I have always let content lead and then when content dictates a technology, um, I lean into it. I think there's a part of me that's, that's where my head's at right now. When the content begs that, I will absolutely lean into it. I'm keeping eyes on it. I also know that there was, I think we all can remember a little, a little while ago when 3D TV was the rage and yeah. everybody bought their 3D TV. There were even networks that <laughs> teed up 3D only channels. But I have one. There you go. I don't watch 3D content. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that once there's not much 3D content out there. That's, that's exactly, the the, that's yeah, why right. content to me, if it leads, then I think it makes absolute sense. I think that that showed, in that example, there was a void of content. And so those, whatever the 3D networks were that came along, they didn't survive. Um, and that also was a hardware issue because I think 
I personally feel like that it's, a, it's, a, it's harder, it's easier to go to a theater and put 3D glasses on than it is to sit in your home and put 3D glasses on. But yeah. again, my so point being the content will lead and I absolutely am fascinated by it. I just, when the content's right for it, I'll lean into it. But you're it. not commissioning it right now? At the moment, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, would have to, what would have to happen? Well, you know, a lot of Oculus Rifts to be sold. A lot. The, well, of listen, honestly, the Star Wars content that I saw today, it started to make me make me think a little bit more about it. Yeah, it was pretty yeah, cool. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, so you talked a little bit about scripted drama, mm -hmm. and because you know we've down here at this market, it seems like everyone's talking about scripted drama, yeah. and of course it's one of the things that's really fueling a lot of these SVOD platforms for Correct. sure, mm -hmm. be it Netflix or be it whatever else people mm -hmm. are talking about. Um, you know. I don't think of your brands as being that scripted, although mm -hmm. you said you know, you're thinking about it. Talk a little bit more about that. Okay. You know. Yeah, no, it's something that we, it's funny, I, I, I say we haven't done scripted, but James Franco's making a scene was, he was remaking scenes from, uh, iconic scenes from movies mm -hmm. in a completely bizarre James Franco way. Okay. And so <laughs> that was the they beginning. They would be a little bizarre, yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy, but a bizarre guy. <laughs> um, he, uh, so that was really us starting to dip our toes into scripted. And it, I, I talk about ways to kind of break the mold a little bit. That was a way for us to, and in in economy that worked for us, start to dip our toes into scripted. Um, Steve Buscemi's uh, Park Bench, although a straight up interview show in some segments, there was also pieces of that were, that were soft scripted. Um, and so we really have started to nudge into that area. And I do see like Silicon Valley on HBO. I think is a show that would absolutely yeah. work as a TechCrunch show. Yeah. So there are there are yeah. places that I really do feel like that we are poised to sneak into it and I think Go90 is already there and I think a lot of what you're going to see on Go90 is a trend that I've also seen as well as um, uh, YouTubers and vloggers um, and social influencers who have always been passionate about scripted but that hasn't been their medium. A, a lot of the new form projects are either starring or involved with um, YouTube celebrities and they're transitioning over into, into scripted content. So, That's so it's, it's definitely something that I think is we're already just on the, the, the precipice of and about to step into. And I think that now that we, as we evolve Go90, and I'm super excited to see the data that comes in on viewing patterns and consumption patterns mm -hmm. as we get into the first few months of the Go90 um, Go, Go ninety lifetime. Actually, that'll be really interesting actually, to get those kind of stats because they'll have a lot of stats from those mobile users. Absolutely. Um, and also, I liked what you said. You said sort of the talent will lead some of this. You know, the talent will cross mm -hmm. over from doing whatever they've been doing on on you know the online media and, yeah. and in maybe maybe simple stuff influencer type stuff in their back bedrooms and they might be thinking what am I, what could we do mm -hmm. and they will lead you as well into possibly scripted 100% okay. okay when you when you just just a, as a final thought mm -hmm. when you look at sort of where you're going now what's the thing that you know you think about right now that you're going to be thinking about in the next i don't know 6 months as your big i mean obviously integrating yeah. your Integrating with AOL and with uh, sorry with Got Verizon with Go there. 90 that'll yeah. be a lot of work. Yeah. But what you, what's sort of what's the thing that you're thinking about a lot? You know, is it like ooh, I really want to work with this star. Or, ooh, I really want to make a you know a, a big series or. Yeah. A I think one thing that we've talked about, uh, and Jimmy may have talked about, but live has become something live. that's been very that's right. interesting for us. And so we did talk a lot about live. Yeah. yeah. And I think to me the the thing I talk about what's the thing within digital that makes mm -hmm. them I mean within scripted that makes the most sense for a mobile platform. But appointment viewing live is okay. something that there is such a potential. Um, and I've been meeting with production companies and taking pitches along those lines. Along mm -hmm. those lines, what is the thing within live? The wow factor of oh my god, I need to watch this and I need and it, it being unique to mobile. Isn't that well. interesting? Because you know, it's just like TV all over again. Because you know, live is like you know the thing. That's the holy grail. Uh -huh. If you can make a live show work, you get that huge audience. Mm -hmm. That's where you get the mass audience. So it's interesting that you're looking at live in a big way. That's well, I'll be very interesting. interested to see what you come up with about something live that will work on mobile. <laughs> very excited as <laughs> and well. And also very interested to see how you integrate with um, Go90 and you know, all the great thing you're gonna come up with. So I hope you'll, you'll come back again and share with us what you're doing in say a year from now. I would love that, right. it's a pleasure. Please join me in thanking Nate for being here and telling us about AOL Content and Studios. Thank, thank, thank you.